In today's lesson, we're going to build this fun interactive peacock. And although it may look kind of simple, we're actually going to use some fairly advanced GSAP techniques to get it all set up and working. Now before we get into building this, I want to show you the very long and interesting history this peacock has had. Here I'm in Adobe Animate, previously Flash, and this is how the peacock started as a Swift file. Oh, he looks so cute. You click, and the feathers open up, you click again, and they retract, all right? So believe it or not, this file was actually made in 2011 using ActionScript 3. Now one of the things I'm really big on in this lesson is getting these feathers to stack the way they do on top of each other. Uh, if you notice, the feathers on the bottom here are on top of the feathers that sort of are more close to the head, all right? They sort of build out in an ascending order from the center. We'll go into that more later, but one of the great things about Flash is that you have this IDE here where you can just point and click and move things around where you want them. So inside the peacock, this feather can literally be on top of this one, and this one's on top of this one, and this one's on top of that one. When we create our artwork, we have full control over the layering, whereas in HTML, things are gonna be layered pretty much in the order that they're added to the DOM. Now, what's really interesting about this file is the code that I used, okay? So I mentioned I used ActionScript 3, and I used the ActionScript 3 version of GSAP. So if you're new to GSAP, uh, this may open your eyes up to how good you have it these days, all right? Back in 2011, we had Timeline Max and Timeline Lite. If we wanted to do something like a stagger, we would use this insert multiple and then do tween max all from inside of there, all right? Basically, this entire line of code here uh, in modern GSAP can be written as tl.from, all right? We don't need insert multiple, tween max, and an all from. So uh, this worked great back in the day, but we're gonna bring things into the current decade. But before we get to current day, I wanna show you this version of the Peacock that was made when GSAP was being ported from ActionScript to JavaScript, all right? This was made in 2012 when I hardly knew any JavaScript and I was basically just trying to learn. Check this out. This version of Tween Light that we're using here is the beta 1.27 from May of 2012, all right? Nearly nine years ago, GreenSock was starting its way into the JavaScript world. Now the code for this version looks a little bit better and probably more familiar to you. You'll see we have a bunch of feathers, some are left, some are right. Uh, that helped me get the stacking that I wanted, but you'll see some jQuery here. You're going to see tween light. Um, and basically to get the stacking that I wanted and the rotation, it looks like I did a for each loop on the left feathers and the right feathers. And what's really should jump out at you and maybe horrify you is that back in the day, there was this CSS object that we had to include in all of our tweens to tell GSAP that we were animating CSS properties. Thankfully, as time went by, it was so common to animate CSS properties that it just sort of became assumed in GSAP, all right? So here we have the JavaScript code from 2012, and today we're going to actually build the modern version of this peacock using all the modern conveniences of GSAP 3 and what I've learned in the last nine years. So here's the version we'll be building out today. You'll see on the right here, the HTML looks very similar to the 2012 version, but I guarantee you the JavaScript code is much different. Now, the challenges that this exercise present are that we need to get these feathers spread out and rotated programmatically, all right? We don't have the convenience of Adobe Animate where I can just draw the feathers where I want them to be unless I was using an SVG, all right? So we're gonna use code to rotate them all the right way, and also handle the stacking order issue, okay? It's very important that coming out from the center, this feather's on top, and then these feathers are all sort of stacked on top of each other going out from the center, okay? This feather's on top of this one, on top of this one, on top of that one, and then on the left, this one's the highest, and this one's the lowest, and they're all going to be behind that middle feather here, okay? So in order to best explain the concepts that we're using, I like to break things down in the simplest, most basic form possible. So I created this very basic challenge that I put out on Twitter to prep people for this very lesson. So what I did was I had an HTML page with nine boxes that are all absolutely positioned. 
And basically the challenge said, arrange the nine orange boxes above to match the stacking order and pattern of image below. All right, so by the stacking order, I mean that from the center going out to the edges, you'll see the Z index is sort of ascending, all right? Zero is on top of one, on top of two, on top of three, on top of four, and eight's on top of seven, on top of six, on top of five, all right? So we're gonna do some Z index magic to get that to work, but we also want these boxes to be arranged left to right, spaced, and then top to bottom to form this sort of arrow pattern. So we're going to take this step by step and in the process we're going to be going over three core techniques. We'll be using function based values for which I have a deep dive video in GSAP 3 Beyond the Basics but I'll give you a quick review here. We'll also use gsaputils.distribute which again we have a video for in GSAP 3 Beyond the Basics and we'll use a third little trick called the up down flippity to help us with the Z index stacking order. So first things first. In my JavaScript, what I want to do is get all of these boxes to go left to right with even spacing. So for all of this code, I'm going to use a gsap.set. The target is going to be any element with a class of box. And we're going to start off handling the X position, okay? Now what I'm going to use here is a function-based value, which means that each target in the array of targets, meaning every element with a class of box, can get its own unique value. So I'm going to create a function here and I'm going to set it up to return a specific value. Now this function is aware of what index each target has in that array. So every time this function runs, I have access to that index. So let me just do a return and say index times 60. Now when I run, each box is going to be incremented by 60 pixels, all right? The index of the first box is zero, so zero times 60 is zero, and the next box has an index of one, so one times 60 is going to be 60 pixels over to the right, and we're not gonna go through all nine here. Now what I do wanna show you is that I can greatly reduce the amount of code here by using an arrow function. So I'm gonna get rid of the word function here and I'm just going to still pass an in index but we'll use an arrow function and since I only have one line that's returning a value I can literally get rid of this bracket here this bracket here and since all I have is a return statement this is all that code has to look like so check it out we've totally stripped things down and we're going to hopefully get boom the same end result all right Hopefully that excites you. Uh, the next thing we need to do is change the Y value so that we have this sort of pointing up arrow sort of look, if you will, or let's just call it a pyramid. So I'm going to add my little comma friend here. And now for the Y value, I'm gonna use gsap.utils.distribute, okay? And what this allows me to do is basically run a function that's going to distribute values in a custom range where we can specify the base and amount properties. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna set the base to zero and I'm gonna set the amount to 120. So basically what that means is that the Y value is going to be incremented between zero and 120 for each box. I'm gonna hit run and now you'll see they're all stepping down. Now you may be saying, Carl, couldn't you have gotten that same result just using what we did for the X value? Yeah, we could, but what's crazy cool about distribute is that I can change things around by using a from value and I can say center. And what that means is that the box in the center is gonna start with a base value of zero and then building out to the left and right, we're going to increment until we get to 120. So I'm not specifying the amount that each box is incrementing, I'm specifying basically the final value here based on the base. So from the center, we're starting with zero, and then as we go down to the left or to the outer edges, this last one here will have a Y of 120, and so will this one here. And for even more flexibility, we can use an ease which is going to impact the distribution. So I could say a power three, and that's basically going to give us a flat distribution curve towards the edges. So 
We go through all of that in that designated video, but for now, all we need is the from center, and without really doing any math, um, things are working out pretty well. And next we're going to attack the stacking order by using the up, down, flippity, which is a technique for turning ascending values to descending. To illustrate, I'm gonna use the text content of each box, and I'm also going to use a function-based value. And right now, I'm just going to return the value of index. And what this is going to do is just put a number zero through eight, hopefully in the top left-hand corner of each box, all right? Now, what the up-down flippity means is that when I'm incrementing a value like in a loop or a function-based value where I know something like index is always increasing, the up-down flippity is gonna return a decreasing value. So right now, we have nine boxes. And if we take the total number of boxes and subtract the current index, that's going to allow us to get descending numbers. So let's take a quick look at this chart that just shows me that if I take the total number of boxes, which is nine, and I subtract an index of zero, I'm gonna get nine. If I take nine and subtract one, I'm going to get eight. If I take nine and I subtract two, I'm going to get seven and all the way down the line. So to do this in code, inside this function here, I need to be able to access the number of boxes that I have. Well, by using function-based values, we have access to the index here, we have access to the current target, and we have access to the entire targets array. So to get that number nine that I need, I'm going to tap into the targets.length. So I'm going to return targets.length minus the index. So now when I run, hopefully you'll see that these boxes are going to go from nine all the way down to one. And that, my friends, is the up, down, flippity. Now you may be saying, Carl, what's the point of that? Well, what we need to do is get these boxes on the left side to be one on top of each other, all right? Due to the natural flow of the HTML, the first box that shows up is going to be underneath the next box and so on and so forth. But I need to get this box here to have a higher Z index than the next box coming, all right? And this again is going very close to what we wanna do with our peacock feathers. So now in my JavaScript, what I'm going to do is manipulate the Z index also with a function-based value. And in order to do this, I need the index I need the target, and I also need the uh, targets array. Now, if I do the same thing as before and return the uh, targets.length minus index, it's going to partially work for me. You'll see now that nine is on top of eight, on top of seven, on top of six, but then on this side, we're not getting the stacking that we want, all right? Without doing any Z index shifting, the right side of this actually gives us what we want in our image. So this Z index function here needs to be a little bit more elaborate with a little bit of logic, all right? So I'm going to cut that out. And here for this function, we're gonna do sort of a multi-liner. And the trick is that I only want to change the Z index on the first four or anything to the left of the middle box. So what I need to do is find the halfway point so that I can stop doing the Z index move. So here I'm going to figure out which is the box in the middle, all right? Now I have nine boxes, and if I divide by two to get the half, I'm gonna get 4.5 here, okay? But I'm gonna floor that value so that I can get a nice clean four, which is the index of the middle box or the one halfway through my array of boxes. So I'm gonna say let half equal math dot floor targets dot length divided by two. So in this case, we're going to get nine divided by two is 4.5. And after we floor it, we'll have our halfway point with a value of four. So now what I can do is I can do a little conditional logic and say, if the current index that we're working on is less than the half value, then I can return targets dot length minus index. And so now when I run, hopefully we should see that on the left-hand side, we have the Z index descending, but on the right-hand side, it's ascending, all right? Threes on top of four, twos on top of three, ones on top of two. 
So now we're basically matching this picture below. And to make everything very clear, uh, for the text content, I should probably only be returning the index as shown in the image. But I thought that was a really clever way to show you the uh, up down flippity. So here we have it. As long as the index of the current target is less than four, which is our halfway point, then we're going to do our targets.length minus index up down flippity move. So now that we've gone through all of these key concepts, let me show you how I'm gonna make this peacock work. Here's our peacock start file. I wanna point out that everything is pretty much set up the way we need. In our HTML, we have a peacock div. Inside of that is a feathers div that includes all these feathers. Now, similar to our previous demo, all of the feathers are absolutely positioned in the same place, sitting on top of each other. And we're gonna use code to fan them out. And then on top of the feathers, we have a peacock body, which we're going to click on to toggle our animation. So in our JavaScript here, we have nothing at all. We are loading GSAP and GS Dev tools, so let's get going. And don't worry, since we went over all those concepts, this is gonna go pretty quick. I'm gonna start off with the gsap.set. We're gonna target everything with a class of feather. And the first property I wanna work on is gonna be the rotation, okay? What we're going for is that we want all these feathers here to be rotated from negative 90 all the way over to positive 90. To handle that, I'm gonna use gsap.utils.distribute. And for the base here, I'm gonna use negative 90, okay? That's gonna be the lowest number that we can have for the rotation. And for the amount, I'm gonna use 180, okay? And now the amount is relative to the base. So if we add 180 to negative 90, we're going to get positive 90, all right? That gives us a range between negative 90 and 90. How do we know? Well, let's give it a run, boom. And there you see. Now, it's not exactly what I want, but you will see that there's a feather here that's at negative 90 and goes over to positive 90. There's some weird points sticking out here. The problem is that each feather is rotating around its center. What we want to do is give each feather a transform origin of, let's say, 50% across and 100% down, all right? We could have done center bottom, but now it's gonna take the bottom point and use that as the transform origin. Let me drop my little comma in, we'll give it a run, and this should give us exactly what we need. Oh, look at that, it's wonderful. We're going from negative 90 all the way up to 90 as the rotation. So with this being our starting point, what we're going to do for the animation is we're going to animate each feather from a rotation of zero, which is going to be its normal starting point up here. So to build the animation, I'm gonna do a little const and we'll say tl equals gsap.timeline. And then I'm gonna do a dot from tween on all the feather elements. And we're just gonna do a rotation from zero, and I'm gonna do a duration of two right now. It's gonna be a little bit slow so that we can actually see what's happening. So let's do a run. And there you go. That's so cool how those fan out. Now you may have noticed that we have that stacking order issue that I was talking about, all right? It's sort of like all of these feathers are on top of the previous one when they come out, and we're a little bit more picky with this, okay? And to speed us along, let's use our good friend, GS Dev Tools. We'll do a dot create, and our animation will be TL. Now, the next time I run, that should give us our nice little fun GS Dev Tools scrub bar. There we go. And then right about here, or anywhere in between, you can see that in ascending order, that we have the ascending Z indexes or the stacking order, okay? Well, what I wanna do, remember, is for these first four feathers, I want to have this one on top of this one, on top of this one, on top of this one. So to save us some misery, I'm gonna go back to our other file. I'm literally going to just copy out everything that we wrote for the Z index. And then back in this GSAP set, I'm just going to add everything I just copied. All of this code is generic in this function, and it's gonna be set up to work with these targets that I have. So now when I run, we should see the right stacking order 
of all those feathers. I love it. It brings a smile to my face, all right? These two are on the outside, and you can see they go down in stacking order here, all right? Very cool. It's subtle, but it's really what I was going for. Now, what I'm not going for is having the middle feather behind everything, all right? I'm going to take this one here and pluck it out and put it on top of all of these other ones. So to do that, in my if statement here, I'm going to say else if the index is equal to half, then we're just going to return a value of something big like 200, all right? So now the next time I run, we should see that middle feather is in the front and all of them fan out in this nice symmetrical pattern with that really cool stacking order that I've been harping on for the last 20 minutes or so, okay? So there we have our peacock and it's fully proud and pluming. Now, we are going to make him interactive, but instead of just having all of the feathers fade out from center, I'm gonna take the entire group of feathers and scale them down a little bit so that they grow and expand, all right? It's a nice little subtle touch that I think helps. So in my animation code here, I'm just gonna add another from tween and I'm gonna select the feathers div that contains all of the feather elements. And we're going to animate from a scale of 0 0.3 and we're gonna set the transform origin to be 50%, which is in the middle, and also the bottom, all right? So this entire group of feathers is gonna grow from its bottom point, which is right around here. Oh, another comma has to go in, and let's see how this looks. Actually, it's gonna look horrible. Um, I don't want this animation to happen after this animation. Well, you know what? Let's just do it, so that if you're a beginner, you understand the power of the position parameter. <laughs> so there you have it, all right? They, uh, grew out and then scaled up. That's not what I wanted. So the trick here is that we're gonna put a position parameter of zero on here so that happens at the same time. And speaking of time, I'm gonna make the duration here of one of the feathers pluming out, and this is gonna use the default duration of 0 0.5. So let's give this a run. Ah, there we go. Now that scaling happens kind of quick, but check it out, you can totally see it working all right um, it's just one of those subtle things that I enjoy doing and I think it just gives it a little bit extra pizzazz if you will and the very last thing we're gonna do is make our friend here interactive we're gonna get rid of the GS dev tools code and we're gonna make him click driven so we're just gonna say boom there's a nice little paste action for you why do I need to type this out we've seen it all before so we're gonna select our peacock which has a class of peacock and then we're going to tell it that on click we're going to take its reversed state and set it to the opposite of its current reverse state all right that's how we do a toggle we've done that with play and pause before we've also done it with reverse so now when i click he's going to close and every time i click regardless of where the timeline is we can open or close the feathers. And that is now how we have an interactive peacock made with the most modern JavaScript and Greensock code available at this point in time. Hey friends, I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and you're getting a ton of value out of your subscription. If you feel like this training is the absolute best Greensock training around, I'd love for you to do me a little favor and tell your friends. Give a quick little shout on Twitter or Facebook, point your dev peers into the Creative Coding Club. The more people we got here, the merrier, and it would be a huge help. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.